Throughout its 2000-year history, the Roman state had many different names. The most common understanding of its name evolution is that it used to be called the Roman Republic, then Augustus came along and proclaimed the Roman Empire, then its western half fell in 476, and the eastern half got renamed to Byzantium. This isn't entirely wrong, but it is based on modern historiography, which simplifies things so historians can talk about different periods without going through tedious definitions every time. To get a better understanding of this matter, we need to remember that the concept of official country name is relatively modern. It comes from a modern convention of international relations, but the people from 2000 years ago didn't have our notion of nation-states, so coming up with one definitive name for their country didn't seem important to them. Before the imperial era, the state was simply called Rome, or Roma in Latin. This name exclusively appears on coins and inscriptions up to the 1st century BC, the time historians call Late Roman Republic. Respublica Romana, or Respublica Romanorum, meant the Roman state, or the Commonwealth of the Romans. It is at the source of our modern word republic, as in government of the people. But its original meaning is more general and not tied to a political system. For the Romans themselves, it remained applicable to their state up until the end of the empire. During the late Republic, we see the appearance of the famous SPQR abbreviation, which stands for Senatus Populusque Romanus. It means the Senate and the people of Rome, and began appearing on coins and inscriptions around 80 BC. This abbreviation denotes the role of the Senate and the people as the two main entities which combined form the Roman state. Despite the transition from the Republic to the Empire, SPQR remained in use, and the Emperor was seen to be the representative of the people. As the Senate's role diminished, the abbreviation lost its use and stopped appearing after the reign of Constantine the Great. In context of international relations, the Empire of the Classical Age was officially referred to as Imperium Romanum, Imperium did not literally mean the empire as the state, but rather referred to the authority of the emperor. In some legal documents, the state has actually been referred to as Actoritas Romanorum, or the authority of the Romans. Since the split between the eastern and the western part was not official, it didn't affect the naming conventions. Nor did the demise of the western empire, as we can see the same Imperium Romanum in the documents of the later era, like the Justinian's law code. After the language shift from Latin to Greek during the reign of Heraclius, we start seeing more use of the Greek translation of this name. Vasilia Romeion started to appear more often as Heraclius added Vasileus to his list of imperial titles. But the Latin version was not completely phased out until much later. It wasn't always used in full, however. More often, the empire was called by the name used by its inhabitants. Romania, or Romania, literally meaning the land of the Romans. This name was used both in colloquial speech and in official documents. After Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne as Imperator Romanorum, or the Emperor of the Romans, in 800 AD, the Western dignitaries started referring to the Eastern Roman Emperor as Imperator Romaniae, or the Emperor of Romania. By using this title, they tried to uphold the notion that only the Pope can make an individual the Emperor of the Romans, while still not offending the Eastern Emperor too much. When they didn't care about offending the Eastern Roman Emperor, they called him Rex Grecorum, or the King of the Greeks. Imperium Romania, or the Empire of Romania, was still in use at the time of the Fourth Crusade. The treaty that concluded that atrocity was called Partitio Terrarum Imperii Romaniae, the partition of the lands of the Empire of Romania. The so-called Latin Empire was also officially called Imperium Romaniae. It should be noted that the language of the ancient and medieval international treaties did not follow the standards of today's diplomacy between the nation-states, so the peace and trade agreements between the Roman Empire and its neighbors often included references not to the state, but simply to the people. In those documents, a Roman side of the treaty can be referred to as simply the Romans, or in case of dealing with pagans or Muslims, even as the Christians. In the Middle Ages, the paradigm of international diplomacy shifted more towards personal relations between sovereigns. This can be seen, for example, in the treaty between Bohemund of Antioch and the Emperor Alexios Komnenos. Bohemund writes, I swear to thee, our most powerful and holy emperor, the Lord Alexios Komnenos, and to thy fellow emperor, the much-desired Lord John Porphyrogenitus, 
that I will observe all the conditions to which I have agreed and spoken by my mouth, and will keep them inviolate for all time, and the things that are for the good of your empire I care for now, and will for <laughs> shit, and will forever care for, and I will never harbor even the slightest thought of hatred or treachery towards you, and everything that is for the benefit and honor of the Roman rule that I will both think of and execute. Thus may I enjoy the help of God, and of the cross, and of the holy gospels. The treaties between the empire and the crusader states sound more like personal agreements than state pacts. This also and especially applies to the final centuries of the empire's existence. During the reign of Paleologus dynasty, the empire operated more as a feudal kingdom than an imperial state. But what about Byzantium? Where does the name the Byzantine Empire come from? This term has seen no use during the empire's existence. Byzantium is, of course, the name of the old Greek city located at the spot where Constantinople was built. The term Byzantine Empire was first applied by 16th century German historian Hieronymus Wolf in his work Corpus Historiae Byzantine. This term gained popularity among the Western historians because Wolf's work was used as a basis for the compilation of Roman histories commissioned by Louis XIV of France. From this point, the Byzantine Empire became a common historiographical term for the Roman Empire of the medieval age. The terms like Byzantium and the Eastern Roman Empire have their use as shorthands to refer to a particular era, but it is important to remember that they are later inventions and have not been used by the people who lived in the empire in those eras. Even though the territory of the empire no longer included the Eternal City, and the political system has changed multiple times, those people still called themselves Romans, and their country, the Roman Empire. I hope I've explained the most crucial points. If you still have questions, or think that I've missed something important, please let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next one.